I'll give you the breakdown. Uh, we have not ever had, to my knowledge, snow in July. So uh, there's that. There's, that's a positive. We have had it as late as May, though. So if that makes you feel a little uncomfortable. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, it's not that bad. I, I would say that, you know, it, on, a, on a hot day, on, a, on an absolutely hot, humid day, it's maybe at most 95. Like that would be oh. the hottest day that we'd have. We don't ever, we don't ever touch with you know triple digits. We don't, uh, uh, we don't often get temperatures above ninety. Anyway, it's usually summers are like seventy to eighty. So, okay. But the reasonable. key question is the humidity. The humidity. Oh. <laughs> How now, much? Now, I don't know what they've told you about that, but but it's not it's not as humid as they say. I don't know. People keep telling me uh, that, that uh, uh, Minnesota is this dry place, but that's good. That means dry means no humidity. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. It's it's never been uncomfortable. Like I I don't know. I don't think people are going to be uh I don't know. All right. Sweating or uncomfortable. It'll be a, it'll be a balmy I'm calling it balmy 75 if that's <laughs> if that's a balmy temperature to you. Oh. That's not exactly. It can't 75. be worse than Charlotte, so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now what is it in Charlotte right now? Uh I think it went up to 70 today or 67 something like that. I, I like how we've become the weather channel now. <laughs> we lose our guests We're 16 and, minutes past yeah, the hour and yeah. we've talked about weather so. this is if this isn't your favorite episode going back uh you know <laughs> years down the road when, when speed running is no longer a thing and we all uh, reminisce at the 10 year uh speed running reunion <laughs> this is the 40 we're getting yeah, do you remember that episode where they talked about what the temperature was because they didn't have anything else prepared that's uh <laughs> my favorite episode you guys aren't looking at the, the 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 topic right now. We've got like two things, so we're right. filling yeah, it up. Yeah, we're we're basically just uh you know doing stand up here, except we're sitting down. So uh, let's go ahead and get into a topic then. How about that? We've got sure, SGQ sure game that's... submissions coming up this oh, Sunday. Yeah. That is right around the corner already. Uh, it feels like every time this happens, uh. It just happens faster than you'd expect. I don't know. It's it, And I don't mean that in a negative way this time around, because we did get a lot of time between HDQ and SGDQ, but just the time seems to move so fast now. Uh, SGDQ submissions coming up. What are your thoughts on uh, what we can expect? Uh, I don't know. This is a very broad topic, so feel free sure. to take any angle you want. I guess the first thing to throw out there, and we can, I mean, obviously we're all three here, we can answer this, but does is the it, it's the endless question, is this still too soon? Because we're still like, you know, I'm always hyped to go to a GDQ, but I feel like we're still a long damn way away from SGDQ. We're still over four months away. Is this still too early to have it? Or do we feel like, you know, this is giving us a couple weeks here, end of March, it's going to be over. Um, you know, I, I don't think it's terribly early. The point of it was, I guess they got people... They gave people enough time after. It feels like it's been a long time since AGDQ. So if you were going to pick up a game, you have it. Um, is it also still the time you want to commit? Because I already know some people who said, oh, yeah, I'm totally ready to commit this game. And they're still already almost over it. And they haven't even submitted the games yet. I don't know. Do either of you feel like you wish it still would have been pushed back? Or do you feel like this is a good time period to drop it in? Uh, I think it's a really good time period because you can't do it too soon because now uh, – especially with the Humble Bundle being involved. I'm sure that involves a lot of time to set up an effort, so you have to factor that into it now. But also just the fact that, um, I mean, like ba like we used to have, like, okay, two weeks after AGDQ, it's like, all right, SGDQ submissions begin. You guys better have already had your game ready. Uh, we've had a few months. People could afford to take the time off after a AGDQ and then start on their game or go sure. back to it, whatever it was. So, uh, no, I think this time period is actually really good time period yeah i mean the thing is and we kind of have brought this up in the past too that uh you, you kind of have to hit the window because if you wait too long then the submission process uh like the after effects of it you know having to figure out what games actually fit the schedule uh there's not enough time for that i i, I would say that it wouldn't be uncommon to see people kind of drop a game for a while now and then pick it back up once they find out it's in sgdq uh, sure so there's going to be kind of like this valley where they're playing other games and they go back uh but yeah, I mean, I, I think that, uh, you know, waiting at least until uh, end of March to submit, you know, and, uh, you know, you, you really have uh, all of March, too, from from uh, the 15th onward. So it's not like you have to get them in in the middle of March. You can wait until the end if you really want to. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I think it's enough time to uh, just like the length of the uh, submission uh, window. I think it's I think it's all good. 
Uh, I guess my th other thought that, uh, and I guess you guys have had this thought as well, so I'll bring it up. That's that's how it works. Uh, <laughs> is uh, related related to races, especially. You know, obviously we could sit here and try to predict specific sure. games, but I think one of the biggest changes you're going to see this year uh, it, with SGDQ, especially, is just the attitude towards. Uh, what qualifies for a race versus uh, what's going to be a solo run. Because I, I do think that, uh, you know, if we learn anything from AGDQ, it's that, you know, too many races can create not only, the, you know, the tech uh, side of things, having to, you know, set up every single game and, uh, you know, the problems associated with that, but also you have to kind of have the race, you know, it has to be there. It has to, uh, you know, you can do a race just to do a race, but it's, I think, a lot bigger story uh, when it is, you know, two people who are really close to each other and, and consistently close to each other and they can, you know, go into the marathon and play just as well as each other. Um, and, and rather than doing a race just for the sake of doing a race, maybe yeah. you kind of have to pick your battles here. What do you guys think? Yeah, um, I mean, go, go ahead, Dark Man. Okay, yeah, I think there's definitely to be more of a focus on finding those uh, races where you have like a high intense competition, like kind of like a lack attack versus Darkwing Duck and Legend of Zelda. Uh, yeah. Like, obviously, you can't find that all the time. Like, there's only so many games right. where they have that kind of competition, but I definitely think they'll probably focus more towards that. And I can't imagine more than one four player race, if any. Like, I just don't see it. You only see one? So. Okay. I just don't. I, I honestly, I honestly, I expect zero. I just don't see it happening. Okay, interesting. Sure. I will say this though. I think the four-player races, to some extent, they bring the viewers. I think that, I really think they do. Uh, I, I don't know that you need to do a lot of them, but I think you, you know, it, it's really beneficial to have one on on the Friday night or on the Saturday night, um, just as kind of this, you know, if you if you want to call it, you know, like the 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 banner, the marquee event or whatever. I kind of think those tend to bring people in. Uh, but yeah, I, I think that there aren't going to be, at least in my mind, there wouldn't be, you know, seven four-way races or something or, like that. at the very least, why not do, if you're going to do a four-player race, do it before or after a, uh, a bonus window, like where you have the setup buffer. So hopefully you're not playing a bonus game that's an hour, so you have a little bit more buffer for setup time if something goes wrong. Mm -hmm. Sure. I, th I think what we're talking about right now is one of the main things. I, I mean, I don't know how many pre... <laughs> Uh, games uh, uh, launch date or whatever uh, for the games topic. How many times they talk about this beforehand? But you figure that this is one of the things that's going to come up regardless in the committee's talks or just how do we handle all these races? Because I think on the surface, is there anything inherently wrong with a race? Is there anything wrong with saying, like, hey, we got two people that are really close to one another. Let's make it a race. Yes, I do think there is. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, um, why do you think that? I was gonna say, well, I think from a viewer perspective, um, not even not from you, a technical standpoint, from a, from just right. just on the surface. Go ahead, yeah. Like yeah, just like just from like the viewers watching it. Like obviously not technical aspects aside, when you have a race of two, even just with two people, it still creates that like especially for games that in which the viewers just don't know what's going on, it makes it that much harder to follow. So if so, I think that's the biggest issue with races is trying to get those correct games that are easy to understand and watch right and is that necessarily a game that i have seen before or is it just a game because you can say like oh well people have seen yeah. link to the past by now just to throw a game out there but do a lot of people really know the spe like it feels to me when you do a race all the specifics of like movement tech for the most part unless the commentary is really good like a super metroid style mm -hmm. then all of that is just lost it's just i'm spending the whole time just watching where is first compared to second compared to third right. compared to fourth that's all i'm keeping track of it's a little less that way when you only have two people at 3 and 4 that's all i'm paying attention to and and here's the thing i don't know about four way races necessarily but i would say that a a criticism of the three player races and i think it also applies to four is just uh there is never going to be a case where all three or all four players in that race are in the race. You know, like somebody is going to fall behind. Uh, somebody might far, uh, you know, shoot way ahead of all the other racers and they've got just kind of a runaway. Um, and, and, and to be fair, you know, like we did see examples of, of you know, close battles for second place uh, in those three player races at AGDQ. But I just kind of think it, it detracts from it when. You're, you're, first of all, you know, you've already got, you know, a split attention when you're trying to watch all these different screens. But then when they aren't even, you know, screen for screen with each other or, or relatively close, 
uh, it just kind of, you lose focus on, you know, okay, I, I end up watching one of the three screens the whole time, or uh, I'm only watching these two because they're close, mm-hmm. and this person, you know, I they they were there. I remember that they did, you know, they were part <laughs> of that race, but... Sure. Yeah. And the sad thing about that, like, I, I, most races i found, when it's not, and I understand the fight for, oh, so-and-so's and so-and-so's going back for second place. When there's not a fight for first place, I think to a certain extent to the viewer's eyes, it almost looks like a failure. Is people look back at great, great Super Bowl or just Super Bowls over the years and say, oh, well, that was Dallas Cowboys blew out whoever here. All right. <laughs> that was people. Cowboys used to win. Um, you know, <laughs> I was like, yeah, I got to remember when that was. <laughs> in a time long, long ago. Um, but yeah, it was a blowout. And you know, everyone remembers, that, OK, what a terrible Super Bowl. You almost like, is that the same case when it comes to a GDQ race that you're kind of putting all your eggs in the basket of? I don't care what the movement tech is. I don't care about the routing. I don't care what the the the, the commentary is because a lot of the commentary is lost anyways mm-hmm. it's just was it close for first place or was it a blowout yeah. then it's a failure right. so you're well, kind of like, putting all your eggs in that basket it's like you ask a random viewer who watched AGDQ last year or this year um who, what do you what race do you think they're going to remember more if they watch both the legend of zelda race or the Mega Man five race i mean sure that's fair it's fairly obvious what they're gonna say Mega mm-hmm. Man five of course yes <laughs> <laughs> without a bird but no. and I guess to be fair to you know two player races there's, there's nothing to be said that just because you do a two player race means it's going to be really close that's that's not always the case either but I think uh what they're going to keep in mind when they pick races for SGDQ I feel like after looking at HDQ this is kind of the lesson that I would take away is that you really need to have two people who are at least on paper going to put together a really competitive race otherwise you're better off just asking that second person to be on the commentary couch. Yes, absolutely. I agree. Like, it has to be close. I mean, <laughs> and if possible, it has to be kind of close in a race perspective, too. Like, it's one thing for them to have close times, but how do they do in, like, a random race-type scenario? Right. So. Who, who cares what your PB is if, you know, you get put on the spot and you're three minutes behind that right. uh, just because you're not used to playing in that setting or something? Sure. I mean, there's a lot of factors that go into it, but... Yeah, and, and the biggest factor, you know, we've been jumping around at the elephant in the room is it's technical issues. If technical issues were not a thing, I think Mike and Rom and their respective committees would still, at the end of the day, just be like, yeah, sure, let's get... Because we all dog on a lot of the committee a lot of times, or at least the two people we know, Mike and Rom, uh, about, oh, you know, you're, it's not about the community, it's just, you know, it's all about money and all this stuff. Like, at the end of the day, the reason why so many games are allowed to be raised races is because of the community is because they say right. i don't want to say no to these three other right. people or these two other people mm-hmm. that have just as good a time and look at super castlevania 4 if they were just like no we just want a solo run there the the p the, the world record was literally switching hands every day in that game for a few months there so all of a sudden what were you the 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 person with the record by x arbitrary date is going to have the time and that's going to be the hardest part going forward is how do you make this work because yeah you're going to have to end up saying no to some people that deserve it just as much but you know at the end of the day it's it's technical issues is they just looked at it and said races by themselves added so much time to the marathon and put us so far behind That being said, is that where you worry about when you say, okay, we need to make sure we don't get so far behind in the schedule? Do you do it by saying, all right, we're not going to let second, third, and fourth runners get in and do races? Or do you say what we'd already talked about and say, don't uh, don't make bonus games just an allotted 100% they're going to be there every time? Because that's another way to say, all right, well, we lost a little bit of time here and there, but we got an hour of setup time here. Sorry to the guy who came and had his bonus game in, but you... You were told, you were given this warning that you might not end up actually getting your game in. I think that's the direction they want to go in. But now, you know, the GDQs are an endless pendulum of just swinging back and forth with extremes where all of a sudden, you know, SGDQ last year, we were three, four hours ahead. AGDQ, we're back to six hours behind. Now, inevitably, we're going to be three, four hours ahead again. Dark man, what's up? Yeah, I was going to say, here's my take on uh, like the set of the buffers. Here's my solution to it, right? So it's kind of maybe does makes things a little bit more complicated, but I don't think it's that bad. So my thing is, right, you always, always at every GDQ have like a five or a ten minute game submitted, right? So if you accept that game, make it as part of like a bonus game, right? 
like easy, right? It's easy to have that wow factor from that because it's a five minute game. Like usually with a five minute game, there's some sort of busted factor to it or some wow factor. And so you have that as your buffer game, right? And then you have like 50 minutes or 40 minutes or whatever of buffer time. However, if you don't actually need that buffer time, create a new category of games, reserve games. You automatically tell the person who gets a reserve game in, look, there is absolutely no guarantee you will play this game. However, if we are ahead, you may play it. And we will schedule this game for this time or this block. And if we're ahead and we get to that point, you can play it. So it's a one-shot deal. You either play it in yes. that, that specific mm-hmm. section. Or yeah. I just want to say, I love that idea. I think that's absolutely how it should be handled. I think people should just be ready on deck with, and you yep. know, maybe give it to some people who they already have another game in. And there's no pressure. It's just, we know you can run this game at a high quality. The, the garrison mm-hmm. doing Bucky O'Hare. Yeah. You know, like as long as he knows, like, it, see, it's tough to say, we'll give you this reserve game, but you may play it Monday. You may play it Wednesday. You may play it Friday. No, just say you're in this block. And if it doesn't happen, then it doesn't happen. So be it. Interesting. So, yeah. Yeah. I think that's the number one way to handle because ultimately all of the, the, the race deals are scheduling issues. Now, that being said, when something takes, you know, it, it, it you got to admit, it takes a little bit of hype off of it. Oh, the big four-way Mega Man X hundo race when it takes almost an hour to set it up. It takes a little bit of the uh, uh, the shine off of that. So if that's the case, then yes. And if you can't fix that this marathon or right now you want to take a break from that, I don't blame them if they say we don't want to do right. as many four let's, three-way races. Let's go ahead and, and switch off of the, the race uh, discussion and talk about <laughs> instead. <laughs> Give me a game or two that you think SGDQ now is the time. What, what it's, you know, what, what's been sitting on the back burner. Bring it back out here. What are we missing? I have the perfect game. Mega Man four. It hasn't been in four GDQs. If Chelney is going, he's going to get it in. If he doesn't get it in, I'm going to literally riot on the streets. Riot on the streets. (laughs) That's right. Yeah, Duckfist was the last one to play it, right? In a yep. GDQ. A GDQ 13. 13. We're two yeah. and a half years. It's been that long. <laughs> and if you, you factor it, you know, there's so many Mega Mans they run every year. There's seven, eight Mega Mans. And all of a sudden you realize you've gotten two and a half years in Mega Man 4? We're talking about one of the yeah. more popular right. ones that's not been in for a while. Yeah. So, um, yeah. I, okay, so I'm actually going to bounce off of what Eurochan just said. Sonic, something like Sonic Boom? I think you, yeah. if you're going to hit it, you need to hit it right now. I think you needed to oh, hit it six <laughs> months ago, but uh, yeah, no, I mean, that's, that's okay. That's, you know, and, and better late than never. I still think, I think that applies. It's just, uh, it's unfortunate it didn't get its window. Cause I do feel like sure. that, you know, I haven't heard any hype related to Sonic boom recently, <laughs> you know, like, mm-hmm. nothing about the franchise that, you know, whether it's the, uh, the game or not, but it just, it felt like there was a, a brief moment in time where anything Sonic Boom did was heard by the internet. And uh, <laughs> that was like leading up to HDQ. Sure, yeah. yeah. No, there's, and, well, I, I 100% agree. If I'm Mike in the committee, I found a way to get Sonic Boom into the marathon. Get DSS, get Dax, get someone to show up and run Sonic Boom. Mm-hmm. Um, but didn't happen. Maybe at this point, if it, 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 people love DSS. DSS yeah. is an, like has really become, I think, one of the five or ten most popular GDQ runners out there. So if you can get him to show up and show what a post patch version of Sonic Boom is, get it because according to him, it actually makes it a better speed game. Uh, <laughs> once you take out just because uh, with apparently a gig of updates, all they did was patch the knuckle the knuckles jump. The game is still incredibly broken <laughs> and has a lot more to it now. And it's about a, you know, it goes from like a 30 minute one trick pony to a 50 minute, actually pretty interesting speed game. Sure. So I really want to see that. Another game I really want to see kind of a spiritual successor to the Sonics, especially now that we're seeing it's about to make a Wii U release is Freedom Planet. Uh, an amazing, an amazing fast paced platformer. Uh, HDL is absolutely in love with that game as are a lot of people. Um, it's, you know, probably a lot of people don't know about it right now, but once it gets its Wii U release, I think that is almost of shovel knight proportions. Uh, the kind of, uh, uh, chord it could strike with the, uh, uh, casual fan base out there. Uh, unbelievably fast 2d platformer. I think that has a very good shot because the other thing I'm mainly looking for is in just, I know you asked for one or two games, but the <laughs> overall, I'm just going to list off like just give me the whole games. thesis. Just, here's everything that's going to be in. Yeah. Um, the overall, uh, uh, um, 
uh, uh, my thesis, yeah. <laughs> I guess, on games getting in is that they want to look for more games. You look at what was successful at AGDQ. It was more of the stuff that, again, they haven't seen a lot of before. Right, right. So I think you're going to see less and less repeats now. Now, that's not to say you don't have your bread and butter games and your bread and butter categories. You'll have your Super Metroid. Although, maybe this time it's something like an RBO, something, you know, a, 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 a low percent, a different kind of category there. Uh, but you got your Super Mario's, your Super Mario Brothers 3, your Mega Man's, and you got your bread and butter games that keep people coming back. But I think you want to see more of these different types of games that you haven't seen before. Freedom Planet, inevitably, are we going to see Mighty Number no. 9 make an appearance? How many people are going to submit Here's Mighty Number? I, no. I, I want to know where I they totally... draw the line. I want to know where they draw the line. Are we going to get somehow, some way, I just, I get this awful idea in my head and, and i don't maybe it's not awful i don't know there's going to be people throwing things at me for saying this but hat and time beta is going to find its way into sgdq <laughs> it is going to find its way into sgdq they are going to demo some stage it's not even going to be the whole game just some stage and uh i mean is that coming out before sgdq i can't remember what the release date is on that but uh, for time we've supposed, seen it was supposed to be spring but spring? i don't know okay well yeah. maybe the whole game will be out by then then we won't have to worry but it's just it's like people have been running the alpha of that game they've been running the beta of that game they've been running the every other greek letter of that game so it's going to find its way in there somehow whether or not it's it's fully released that's it's going to happen uh, Another so. game being brought up in the chat, and I, I know it's I'm not saying this because of my my co-host here, uh, but Bcast is another game that I absolutely oh think God. should make an appearance. As I see no yes. reason for, I see no reason why in when every year we end up having seven Mega Man's in. This is genuinely one of the most entertaining, fast-paced. Mm -hmm. uh, fan-made Mega Man games out there. I Let think me, this absolutely deserves a spot, especially if you're billing, not that I think ROM and the committee think of it this way, but especially if you're billing SGDQ as more of like, we give chances to like more, you know, like like the other games of the world, the, the indie games or the fan-made games. I think BCAS, honestly, whether it's golden or not, I think is an amazing choice to have an SGDQ. And I, let me, let me uh, pitch BCAS. You're going to pitch, pitch, you guys are going to pitch yeah. BCAS. All right, I can't this believe this is, is why. Right now. This is why BCAS is literally the best classic Mega Man to watch. It is literally better than any other of the main classic Mega Mans. Because if you die in that, it's not that big of a deal. It really isn't. Oh. And the game is so fast paced that it's really entertaining to watch. Like there's it's taking it, the you classic can see, Mega Man. Yeah, Go you ahead. can see the difficulty in it. Like you can't necessarily see the difficulty in some of the more classic Mega Man speedruns, but you can really see it in BCAS. It's such a fast paced, great watch. Like it would be a fantastic watch, no question about no, it. No, I just want taking the classic Mega Man formula and <laughs> applying the modern, you know, again, yeah, everything's fast paced. If you die, it's not a big deal. Just keep going. People can see the difficulty a lot better. Completely agree with Dark Man, Golden, go for it. I want to make this disclaimer here that the twenty dollars I gave you underneath the table before we went live <laughs> is slowly working its way onto the camera. I didn't say <laughs> To run it. I didn't say you had to run, but I think that's true. Should be in. And Golden is a completely capable runner of doing it. I know there are other people who absolutely can do it as well, including people like Ice Plug in the chat. I just think BCAS, I thought it was a shame it wasn't in AGDQ. And maybe it got pushed out because of other games, you know, wanting to see Mega Man 1 with people like Dexter and Cool yeah. Kid, wanting to see Mega Man 5 with run with all of you guys doing it. You know, they wanted to they wanted to give those like the more classic Jeez. games the opportunity. But we've all said a million times, once I see one Mega Man game, I can't watch the other seven because it's I it just looks too the right. same. I think BCAS is good. You put that at the end of a block, I think it's going to rev people up as opposed to, oh, God, another Mega Man game. Yeah, I mean, here's what it boils down to. It, it really depends on how solid is the, the Mega Man lineup. You know, if we get somebody to submit the fours and the, the, the tens and the, you know, we have somebody running one. Do we really need a fan game in there? Even if it is BCAS, you know, or, or, or uh, 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 you know, Minus Infinity was a case. I think SGDQ, when you looked at Minus Infinity, that was an example of a run that, uh, I don't want to say that, that, you know, the Mega Man block was lacking at that SGDQ, because I don't believe that, but I think it just brought something else to uh, what otherwise was going to be just another classic Mega Man block, uh, and so yeah, I mean that's that's kind of maybe. So I'm saying, gonna but... so we're, we're 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 we are we are knees deep in March. Uh, we are in March Madness. Everyone's talking about bracketology right now. If you're in the college basketball world, and I'm gonna apply a little Joe Lenari logic where you say I don't I'm not going to pay attention to conference affiliation. 
I'm not going to pay attention to, well, you know, we'll already have other classic Mega Man, so something like a B-Cast couldn't get it. And not just B-Cast, this goes across all games. Is they said, you know, we were this close to there being like nine two or nine Sonic games at AGDQ. Yeah. I'm just looking at it. I don't really care that these are all Sonic games or these are all Mega Man games. They're just all good watches. And so this is still a better watch than 80% of the other stuff that I could have put in over it. So, uh, you know, uh, I think you don't pay attention to that necessarily. And even so, BCAS, I, I'm going to keep going on about BCAS about this, but BCAS <laughs> is, is like, BCAS is that really entertaining, high scoring team who yeah. just comes in. <laughs> they don't play crap for defense, but they're going to they get the ball, they shoot. Yeah. yeah, they're just, gonna get the ball. They're gonna put up a yeah. three every time down. And to a certain extent, you want games like that in your marathon. It's just, you know what? It's almost nonsensical to us to to a point. But we're just gonna get like a high octane thirty minutes. So of just, all right, so so just to wrap up the discussion because we could talk about game submissions for for years. And clearly, you guys are you know on on the Bcast juice right now. <laughs> uh, I, I guess just. Uh, yeah, exactly. Drink it up. Uh, do we have a a final thought for what we can expect from uh, submissions? You know, I, I, first of all, first of all, do we think that uh, I, I think five is the maximum games you can submit? Still, right? Five is the maximum. Yeah, it's still submit. five. Yeah. Are, are, two are, are we going to be seeing people submit? all five you know like is that, is that going to be the common theme where like i'm going to try to fill up every single slot or is this going to be one of those where it's like i'm i'm really you know i'm pushing this one game pushing you know these two what it, what is sgdq's submission New, okay. newer people are going to submit five five newer people are going to submit five because to them it's just anything i can get that might stick i think quote unquote veterans will submit one or two because uh, they also see the benefit of not doing. Don't want, you don't want to. You don't want to get all five years in. No. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, I, I agree. Like, okay. I, I think it's for the most part, especially within like the veterans, they're going to stick to one or two games. Okay, we'll see what the veterans but, do versus the newbies, and we'll break it down on the analysis <laughs> show. <laughs> I, I know we've got. I, I know we've talked about this ad nauseum, and it's like it's a big deal. I know a lot of people are starting. It's creeping up all of a sudden. Three days from now, we're doing it. The last thing I'm going to bring up is I hope they've got the Games Done Quick submission website worked out a little better this year. I hope we are allowed to update our videos actually within the you know whatever our time frame was because they always said stuff like and not just that but other stuff as well. They said they were going to get that implemented for HGDQ. Didn't happen. Hopefully we see that going forward with SGDQ and beyond. Okay. All right, let's move on because we actually have other topics. What you know earlier we said we were just filling oh, time and then okay, well it turns out we we, we have some <laughs> other stuff too, so we might want to get to that before uh, I don't know, 2016. So uh, <laughs> we've got uh, we'll look at the clippy clip here. This is uh, oh, yeah. not not uh, the most recent happening. I guess it's been a, a little while now, but uh, we're looking at Yoshi's Island, and uh, we're talking about a game that is actually under 30 minutes at this point, <laughs> if you want to go for any percent. Uh, a warp's been found to 6-8, using kind of the same uh, ideology of uh, the Magical Journey run, if you remember that, from a while ago, mm. where they would uh, kind of instantly clear every single stage. Here, you're kind of seeing that in World 2. Uh, and then what this is going to devolve into as you uh, watch each world end here rapidly uh, is eventually a, a warp that leads to the final stage. So skipping over several worlds of gameplay. And I, I believe the uh, the time for this is something around 27 minutes. Yes, at this point the low now. 27. At least as of a few days ago. So maybe for all we know, something new and exciting is always changing every day. I just love the key popping up at the beginning of every level. I just like that. It, I mean, it looks so from a viewer's perspective, you, you see the stage kind of get overwritten uh, at the very start. You like watch somebody yeah. paint over the stage. Like, okay, wait a minute. This is the most obvious. Like somebody went in there and did something to this cartridge. Cause that's not the way it works, but it right. is. That's the way it works. And, and we're talking about a game that uh, for, for many, uh, you know, years prior to this, people were saying, you know, can Yoshi's Island, become a shorter run so that we have an excuse to keep it in marathons because you know <laughs> we always seem to get that hundred percent yoshi's island run or that even any percent you know sitting at just under two hours uh warpless and such uh that's that's a lot of time to allocate to a game consistently <laughs> it's just as soon as the level's like yeah 
Yeah, I agree. I feel like, you know, and, and, uh, okay, we're going back to talking about GDQs again. I feel like GDQs, to a certain extent, I'd like to see kind of being a review of, this is what happened in the speedrunning community this year. This is what we were able to do, and now we're going to showcase it for you guys. I would love to see something like, I think this is the perfect length category. Say, hey, something new is going on in the Yoshi's Island scene. Let's see who this, let's show you this game broken to all hell. So, yeah. yeah. I, I, I really, uh, uh, really cool that they were able to find this, and I think this is a, a perfect kind of GDQ showcase as opposed to something that people will necessarily grind out quite a bit attempts for, I would imagine. That 100% is still the category for this, but obviously you can't just do 100% every year for GDQ, so I think that's kind of where its home is. That being said, it sounds like MT and Crispy have actually been going back and forth on this quite a bit. Yeah, so. and, and I think uh, something else to keep in mind, too, uh, between this and Super Mario World, uh, just finding consistent setups to apply them to marathons, uh, I think that's really the only variable keeping them uh, from doing something like this or pe keeping people from offering them. Uh, because I do think that both this and uh, Super Mario World, uh, the, the, the broken disasters that both games are. Yeah. <laughs> I think that they're pretty obvious inclusions if you could find somebody who's able to do it consistently. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I think this is really cool. There you go. You see it. They're in a six eight at this point. Just skip game. over. <laughs> skip over the majority of the game. <laughs> Ice Plug has a question in chat. Just to jump off of that, well, we have Super Mario World credits warp at SGDQ to kind of bounce in with this. I think it kind of goes to the same thing. Ice Plug was talking. Or Ice Plug. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, Dark Man was talking about earlier in the show is where maybe that's your perfect kind of bonus game yeah. that you fit in. Sure. Yeah. I mean, that's again, that's the thing. I think it ultimately boils down to can you find a runner who says, yeah, I can do this consistently? Sure. Yes. You know, I, I'm not going to. And maybe it was something like something so short as Mario World. Maybe you say, we're going to give you 10 minutes of attempts. Just to try it. Yeah. Yeah. Or, while we're like, in bonus block right here, while we're setting up for the next game, you get 10 minutes of attempts. See if you can get it. Mm hmm. <laughs> Patty, I agree. So yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, anyway, that's that's kind of uh, an interesting development. I'm yeah. sure Yoshi's Island. At this point, that just kind of feels like the floodgates opening. Like it's, I don't know. Who knows what it's going to look like a month from Congrats now. Congrats to but... MT for having the current yeah. record in that and the one up on uh, Crispy. We'll see if Crispy can uh, answer. The category looked pretty close to optimized. There was maybe a few seconds you could pull out of it. Yeah. So maybe sub 27 is a thing. All but right. We'll see it develop. Well, guys, we got uh, some other topics here, too, for the day. It looks like we've got uh, a Kirby marathon going on this weekend. We've had themed marathons a few times uh, show up every now and then. Uh, but we've got one dedicated to arguably the uh, the cutest video game character. Uh, <laughs> I've, heard, I've heard it a time or two, people saying Kirby is cute. So uh, that's going on this weekend on Kirby Speedruns is the channel at uh, twitch.tv slash Kirby Speedruns. Do we have uh, any any hype for this? What are we looking forward to in the Kirby uh, Marathon? Just like, oh, there's a lot of great things here that you just don't get to see. I'm actually kind of sad they don't have Kirby's Dreamland Three, but other than that, like Kirby's Dreamland Two is a really good game. Um, Kirby's Dream Course is one of my personal favorites, so I'm just curious to see how that speedrun will be. And of course, as we featured a couple of weeks ago, Kirby Tilt and Tumble. Tilt and Tumble. I mean, that's. <laughs> Tilt and tumble the GameCube. I mean, what, what do we need to say? Save. That bias That's the sounds. highlight game right there. <laughs> That's yeah, like, I, it's great. Like you're seeing things like Canvas Curse and stuff like that. It's just there's so many Kirby games and you don't realize it. But we're gonna get to see all of them. I'm, this is gonna be a fun marathon, I think. One of my favorite. You know, everyone. I, I remember some people talking about. Oh, it's. Kirby Superstar, and then it's everything else. Nightmare in Dreamland is one of my favorite speedruns I've ever watched at a GDQ. Go back and watch Ness and Marsh's Race from HDQ 2013. That is one of the hidden gems out of all GDQ races. Watch that. It's all fast-paced, Meta Knight play. It's really, really good. So definitely go check that out. And, uh, you know, I, I believe that's part of the schedule here. I know good friends of mine like Marsh and Kirby Master are a part of this. Uh, make sure you guys check that out because there's going to be a lot more than just Kirby Superstar that this uh, franchise has to offer. The thing about it is it seems like Kirby is the franchise that oftentimes gets kicked around as, uh, you know, why can't we seem to fit more than one game? In, and why is it always Kirby Superstar? 
You know, it's yeah. every marathon that puts a Kirby game in, it's like, all right, well, we feel pretty good about Kirby Superstar, but we don't really want to take chances outside of that. So it's it's interesting to see that the series gets its own uh, marathon and that, you know, there are enough runners of the games out there to kind of fill uh, a, a, a kind of a nostalgia trip through the history of Kirby uh, all in a weekend. So, yeah, that's going on. Uh, any other final thoughts on Kirby speedruns? Um, oh, it's Kirby's cute. Not, yeah, Kirby's cute. It's Kirby's not cute. a continuous marathon, so not they are continuous. stopping. Okay. Yep. What so, do you mean by they are stopping? They're not doing it. The second one? No, no, no. They're stopping after each night, rather than. Oh, okay. okay, oh, okay. I thought you meant like. I thought you meant like. Hey, we we had a really good time oh. with the first one. We're gonna do it again. Like. <laughs> <we're>... <laughs> <laughs> this is a one-off. I don't know why I thought that, but yeah, it's uh, okay. I knew you thought that. That's I'm awesome. on the ball uh, to use an earlier nice. reference. So nice. yeah, okay. So uh, all right, let's just move on. <laughs> We've also got uh, another Mega Man relay coming up here, uh, and that is this Saturday at uh, 4 p.m. Eastern. And uh, it's yeah, unlike the previous this. ones. Unlike the previous ones here, we've seen yeah. some of the classic Mega Relays. We've seen even the Mega Man X Relay. Uh, but the twist in this one is that it is one game from each Mega Man series. So there's one classic uh, Mega Man. There's one X game. There's, uh, I think, Dr. Wily's Revenge uh, yep. is one of them. Uh, and we've got, I think, Unlimited representing the fan games. And So th mm -hmm. there's kind of just this whole... Uh, I don't know how to say it because there's, there's it's, it's a spin on the classic Mega Relay, but at the same time, it's going to be kind of familiar. Uh, what do you think? Yeah, in, in kind of the same way. Go ahead, go ahead, Darbam. Yeah, it's it's great. Like it, it's pretty cool to see. Like you you're going to see at this you know race how varied Mega Man has turned out over the years. It's not just that you uh -huh. know jump and shoot Mega Man that you're used to. I mean, we have ZX in there. ZX is ZX is jump and shoot, but it controls very differently. Like if feels very different compared to the other Mega Man's in my opinion. Then you have of course Battle Network. Battle Network it's like RPG like. Right. And then you have Legends, everybody's favorite Legends. I mean, it's just you're going to see a lot of different gameplay and it's it's really interesting to see how that turns out to be in like a race setting, how that ends up. It's going to be an interesting marathon. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's you know kind of building off the same thing I just said about Kirby is a lot of people have this perception that it's only Kirby Superstar. A lot of people kind of have this like, oh, there's the Mega Man games, there's the X games, then there's kind of everything else. And by only giving you a taste of each series, it's gonna be fun to watch that kind of like you're saying, Darman, almost like like I'm watching a YouTube video of <laughs> the history of Mega Man right. and see where he's gone over the years. I like the idea that they're only doing the first game from each series and that there could be sequels to this sort of thing in the future sure. as we see oh, Mega I Man see 2, 2, okay. Game Boy, X2, 0, 2, Battle Number 2, all the way down again. Do it for the third, do it for the fourth. I yeah. like to see this keep going and just say, all right, I'm not going to... You know, it kind of combats the whole idea that we have of a lot of Mega Man games at GDQs, where a lot of it is, I'm going to give you four classics and then like three Xs, right. where all of a sudden, yeah, by the fourth classic, I'm probably like, I get it. I, I get what the formula <laughs> is. Now the formula, every game, even from Mega Man, NES Mega Man to Game Boy Mega Man, is going to be completely different. The rules are going to change on me. It's going to be exciting that way, but it's still familiar. It's still the Blue here's, Bomber. Here's the thing on, on, on the Mega Man Relay. It's been a, pr it's a proven formula. Formula. It works. It's been exciting. They've uh, managed to make somehow this six hour race uh, close almost every single time that, that it's been executed. So it's interesting to me that uh, all you have to do to put question marks out there is say, OK, well, instead of doing what we we know works, we're going to take the same general idea and just throw in other games that uh, are from the same series. And so now all of a sudden it's kind of exciting again. Like, is it really going to be close? What's it going to be like when we get to Battle Network? Uh, you know, is, is it still going to be a race at that point going into it and then leaving that game how close will it be after that uh, yeah I think it's uh, an interesting concept and again that's 4pm uh, eastern twitch.tv slash joka is the joka. channel joka uh, that'd be Saturday 4pm eastern Saturday 4 did I get that wrong what did I say no you just said 4pm eastern you didn't say Saturday okay alright Saturday uh, oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. just yeah. any 4pm any, every, every 4pm you feel like uh, yeah, any day of the week start right. now all right, sick. Let's go ahead and move on here. I think we are uh, next looking at, uh, uh, let's see. It looks like we got a record. That's, that's what's right. up next. <laughs> oh, okay. That happens. Okay. Well, we've got a pretty big record this week. Oh, baby, do we. Yeah, this is uh, Furious Paul, Super Castlevania 4, 3206 is the time. 
Wow. This. <laughs> okay, <Yeah>. so to, <laughs> so to get a little bit of history, Super Castlevania 4, I, I I still believe was a believer in this was the speed game of 2014. Um, <laughs> not that it was a new release, but just watching the amount of competition, it was not that long ago that uh, uh, um, there were uh, Funk Doc had an, uh, thought to be almost untouchable time here. Since then, the game has come down literal minutes. There's been so much competition between the top six, seven runners of this game. You can see that at AGDQ. And the record was literally changing by mere seconds every, like all the time. Is Oh, I just PB'd by two seconds. I just took world record by one second. This was, I think, a 12 second, or like a 14 second, something second, like that. 12 second improvement. It was 12 yeah. seconds. Okay, let's not, let's not get excessive here, no. 12 <laughs> Second improvement, my furious Paul Golden. You had something amazing to say about this. How you described this run at I, the production meeting? Uh, I I don't remember if I've uh, it, got the right words. You here, said but yeah. What? You said this was one of the greatest view runs you've ever seen. Yeah, I mean that's uh, I, you know I was going to put some spin on that, but I don't know exactly what phrase you're looking for. But yeah, I mean it's it's the execution is just unbelievable. And if you look at uh, from Paul's perspective, even, you know, you ask him, well, you know, what went wrong in this run? He'll tell you, okay, I made one mistake. Uh, and the luck is just incredible, too, throughout. You know, th this is a, a run that I know he wants to push to uh, a high 31 eventually. But, you know, all things considered, I think 3206 is a fantastic time for this game. And it's it's going to be absolutely, uh, you know, the the combination of execution and, uh, and luck. luck needed to be able to surpass this just the amount of time that paul's been putting into castlevania 4 lately is it's up there with some of the the biggest uh, and most competitive runners out there i mean to put it into perspective like when you talk about 12 seconds on a game that's this optimized i mean maybe a better comparison would be like if you take rockman 2's record right now which is like 2657 i believe it is and you uh -huh. improve that by like 15 seconds in one run that's what he did yeah. it's like such a mind-boggling improvement to take a game that's so heavily optimized like it is now and just blow away the previous world record in his PB. It's just, it's hard to even fathom that the time can go down that much in one run. Like it, it's, it's such a good run. Like I can't, I can't believe like this happened. It's just insane. Yeah. And, and the storyline that comes out of this, this was such a competitive speed game for an entire year. And you wonder, did all of a sudden in one night, did Paul just kill it? Not just the game, but just like kill the cop. Does everyone else just go? Ah. If if anything, you know, I think it might have just excited people into playing more because I feel like what happened after HDQ was just this excitement kind of it built up to HDQ the, around Castlevania Four. Who was going to get to run uh, at HDQ? And and even you know days before, we're still kind of trying to figure out who's it going to be, who's going to be, <laughs> uh, and and. I think what happened there is just you bring all those runners together and they all got really excited about it and they leave AGDQ with this sense that, okay, we've got to keep playing. You know, it's, it's, it doesn't end here. It's just kind of like, okay, it's going to keep going from there. And I think what you're seeing uh, as a result of that is just another level of gameplay from everybody uh, in that community. And I don't think it's going to actually stop uh, the runners. I think it might dissuade people from grinding out world record attempts if maybe that's something that they were considering. But I think... You know, we've even been seeing weekly races of this game uh, pretty consistently on SRL, too. So uh, good attendance on those. I think it's uh, safe to say it's not going anywhere anytime soon. But this I, I've been talking to the boy to these guys. I almost called you the boys, the boys. <laughs> uh, uh, off stream quite a bit in our production meetings. But I this makes me want to do, I want to blind race this so bad. Yeah. I want to. <laughs> I want to get bodied by this game. This record <laughs> excites me so much. So, well, the, yeah. the uh, Sunday sequence break boys need a, a challenge, so we'll have to find out. Well, I just want to also know they've all played. Yeah, they probably. Yeah, have. Good. I also want to bring up like something like we talked about earlier about like um, can a game be in a GDQ like a race and it's an unknown game? Well, I think Castlevania Four is a great example of that because yeah, sure, it's Castlevania. A lot of people know it, but they're not really that familiar with Castlevania sure. Four. That's you take a game, game like that, with it. Yeah. yeah, but you take a game like that where everything's in front of you and you can just see that everything, like, it, it makes sense. So, like, in that respect, like, I feel like, you know, you can have games like this at a GDQ. Yeah. Kind of went off topic, but, you know, just. Sure. No, I, I, I understand what you're saying completely. It's, it's, it's one of those games that just you can get by looking at it. You don't need to know the underlying mechanics to appreciate sure. it. Sure. 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, the replay there is uh, linked for you. I, I highly encourage you all to check it out yeah. because it is just a, a fantastic speed run. And, and no doubt, uh, you know, there will there'll come a day, maybe next week, maybe uh, five <laughs> years from now, that this gets beat. But uh, still worth your time, I think. So check that one out. And also uh, worth your time is this Glitch Please, which might be one of the best Glitch Pleases we've ever had. Uh, we've got... Oh, our- yeah. <laughs> We've got our, our good friend here, Voltus, 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 Voltus. Sure. I'm going with, I'm gonna go with Voltus. So that might sure. be pronounced wrong. I apologize, but uh, he's got uh, just just an impeccable sense of timing here. Uh, he's playing Lufia too, and uh, yeah, please don't call out companions. He's just uh, just doing his thing. <laughs> Dialogue box says uh, the game's over, and and yeah, the game's over. It froze. <laughs> it's Perfect. Awesome. It froze. I like this what he says here. Hold on, hold on. This is the most ridiculously soft. This, <laughs> this is the most ridiculously soft lock Look ever. Look at this text, man. That's... Look at this text. <laughs> I agree. I mean, can you time it any better? That's. <laughs> it's I, so I, good. you know, sometimes I wonder. I just, you know. <laughs> I know that the speedrunners find things. You know, you're, like, you're casual playing a game. You manage to, uh, you know, find something on your first playthrough. You know, you, you break Secret of Mana if that's what you do. Uh, <laughs> but but sometimes it's just in the middle of the speedrun itself. You, you find something that I, I just don't understand. <laughs> you know, how did that... Isn't that... You get, the chat loves it. I knew they'd love that. That's a good one. They, uh, yes. That's it's one just, of the it's best perfect. we've ever had. That is yeah. like almost like scarier than it is funny like how does that work out i i just liked his reaction he, he, you know if, if that was you know any other speedrunner that i can think of there'd be controllers thrown there'd be you know oh yeah you just yep. start throwing things around your room and, and swearing and he just goes perfect <laughs> this is his first reaction just like perfect yeah on pb pegs two yeah. hours into the run right. yeah i think i'd have cut the stream right about there so uh, i mean <laughs> All right. Well, a reminder to uh, everybody in the chat that uh, if you see something hilarious happen to somebody uh, during a speed run or or blind race or, you know, just something weird happens uh, and we should show it on the show, then you should head on over to the final split dot com and submit the clip. Uh, and that goes for, uh, you know, anything else you want to see on the show as well. If you've got uh, just something cool you want to showcase or uh, if there's a record you want us to be aware of, you can uh, submit those on the website. So we highly encourage you all to do that. And uh, on that note, I guess we can go ahead and just move right into uh, chat Q and A. You know, we usually reserve this segment for the guest. You get to ask questions to the guest, but mm-hmm. I don't really feel like you guys want to ask questions to an empty box. I mean, it's colorful. Yeah, I mean, we could ask it, it how it how, feels. Maybe it's, yeah. it's, maybe it's feeling green. I don't know. Yeah, on a scale of uh, one to five, would you ever come back? <laughs> 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 What do you think? How do you yes no? I give it like a three. Yeah, it's like a three. Uh, so what do you guys got uh, going on this weekend? Anything exciting? Mm. Yeah. I am watching a lot of college basketball. College basketball. It's that yeah. time of the year. It's the almost yeah. turn, for a lot of people, dorks like me who fill out brackets. This is almost the better weekend than the actual weekends so they play out the bracket. Because you're, you're just deciding, all right, how am I going to make my perfect bracket? Oh, I thought you were saying your bracket night... hasn't been busted yet. That's, that's oh, yeah, no, 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 best. that too. Because by the end of next Thursday, your bracket is terrible. Yeah. is just awful. So it's not nearly as cool thing anymore. But, yeah. Uh, for right now, no, just watching, trying to figure out who we're going to, who, who, who we're going to, who we're going to take yeah. deep in March. So, well, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know the results yet. I'm going to go upstairs and find out after the show. But uh, last I checked, my Gophers were still in the Big Ten tournament somehow. So right. I don't know. I don't know how that happened. But uh, what, what do they need? Do they need to win the whole thing? Or they, they, they... I, I think even if they win the whole thing, they might still get booted from the tournament. That's how, <laughs> that's how bad they are this they're year. Still not going yeah, to put it. You know, you gotta, we, supposed to get an automatic. I think yeah, the, the whole automatic. You know, we're going to switch to manual. Uh, we're just going to override there. Put somebody else in. Uh, all right. We saw a lot of questions. All right. This is the most questions I think we've ever had. I know, right? During, everybody just wants to know. They're dying to know. So uh, one of them I saw fly off the screen really quickly was uh, Spike. Do you have it? Do you yes. want to reveal your SGDQ submissions? Oh, uh, Any, anything yeah, sure. you want to spoil for us? 
I'm trying to think of what all I'm actually submitting. Uh, uh, so the number one game I'm submitting is Rayman 1. Uh, the game's been uh, busted the last uh, year. So not in like, the, it's, I'm not wrong warping ever, everywhere and everything, <laughs> but the European community has put in an amazing amount of work into that game, has shaved over 20 minutes off that game's runtime in the last year, uh, about 14, 15 months. Uh, so I'd really like the opportunity to showcase that. Um, in addition to that, it's kind of general, but I know myself at the Kingdom Hearts community, we're going to in some way offer Kingdom Hearts 1.5 Proud Mode to try to make some sort of a follow-up to KH2FM Critical that we did at AGDQ, and we're going to offer some sort of Tropical Freeze. I think the biggest thing with us in Tropical Freeze is we want to offer something because uh, just like Golden, NKB, who has the current number three time in that game, uh, SGDQ is basically in his backyard this year, living up in Minnesota himself. yep. yep. So we'd like to see him get an opportunity. We don't know if that's best to do it as a race since his time would be probably by that point still worse than Michael Goldfish who just ran at AGDQ. Um, but we think maybe like there's three of us going, maybe we can do like we can do a three race or I can sit out and with Ghoul, we can do two way commentary for him and Cruncha, the third and fourth best players in the game right now. Uh, time wise, at least. Sure. So, um, yeah, Something I think that's line a- thing. I think those are my main submissions, right? I don't think there's anything else, but I don't know. Maybe I'll get crazy somewhere. So, yeah. Um, All right. Don't uh, mind. That, what, about you? what about you guys? What about you guys? Uh, so, oh. Well, I mean. I was going to ask. You guys don't have to answer. You guys can answer. many games. Zero. Many. Zero. 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 Yep. Oh, man. Yep. The goose egg. Yep. Yeah. No running a game i i have not decided what all i'm submitting i'm not trying to be diplomatic about that i'm uh <laughs> just being honest with you uh i, I <laughs> three days away i have no idea that's right i'm just like i could submit nothing and it'd be great uh dryer 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 is this the the gdq for dryer yeah this is the gdq for dryer you got the okay. hometown advantage all right well well i hope somebody's gonna offer it then if it's the gdq <laughs> for dryer I, I look forward to seeing who it is <laughs> not i uh <laughs> No, I don't know. I mean, you guys, uh, you know, basically pitched it for me, but yeah, I don't know. I, I think if I was to submit anything at this point in time, I'd probably try to push for Bcast just to see, uh, you know, what it can do. I don't, I don't have high expectations or anything. You know, I wouldn't say it's a lock-in game necessarily, but uh, it's kind of what I'm playing now. So might as well submit what you're playing now and and see what happens. So, yeah. The, uh, uh, that's a good submission. The other uh, projects, that one. the other projects, it's like, oh, I haven't really started anything else yet, so I'm not going to submit something not knowing whether I can do it or not. So mm-hmm. we'll just kind of wait. But the Minnesota block for SGDQ, it does kind of feel like, yeah. I wonder how much that's going <laughs> to actually play into their de- how much is that going to play into their decision making? If that, you know, it's like, oh, hey, well, this one's really close to where I live. Uh, I have a hometown, yeah, right. I don't know. I don't. Uh, I think we might be overthinking that one. <laughs> But I saw one question in chat. Um, yeah. this, this might be a tough one to answer, but we'll try anyway because okay. we don't really know what the games are going to be. Is uh, Valiant Cookie asks if you got to pick the finale game of SGDQ, what would you choose? Ooh. Hmm. I, I wow. Okay. Like, yeah, if you could just just assume the person's going to submit it, it's going to come. You know. What sure. You- Something that hmm, I mean, it also depends on what each of our goals are. With yeah. you know, are we sure. trying to maximize donation dollars. This is just selfishly what we want to see. Um, again, I think you're going to see a lot of new stuff. So you don't have you, you used up your Super Mario RPG card, your Ocarina of Time card. <laughs> um, you know, you just did more Majora's Mask. Maybe you see something like a Majora's Mask hundred percent filling that slot. Um, I think there might be some minor backlash because they felt like Ocarina of Time hundred percent didn't have a great response. Uh, although in defense of them, I would say that's more so because of uh, the time slot than anything else. Uh, well, I feel like oh, so. Here's here's my only uh, idea that I would throw out there, and I feel like it's, it's going to answer itself. Is I, I would say Superstar Saga seems like the game that uh, it's going to kind of go from the uh, wh- why wasn't you know like it had no showing, and now all of a sudden it's going to be the finale. Like really, can it make that big of a leap? But I all I would argue it can. Uh, sure. just based on how broken that game's become. Uh, I think that's a good candidate. The only thing I would say against it, and I think what might be taken into consideration too, is that we did just have, you know, the uh, uh, strong showing from Mario RPG at HDQ. And so again, you've got this question of like, okay, well, you know, is Superstar Saga going to be overlooked by uh, the Mario RPG run, which seems to be the case 
uh, with a GDQ. Why not do it? Like, I mean, it seems like every GDQ we've had like a Final Fantasy or some strong oh, yeah. Zelda or something. Why not take this marathon and do something different? Let's try a risk. Sure. You know, what's what's the worst that's going to happen if you put a half an hour, an hour game in there? And I thought you, know, you were going to say Half Life. What if, what's the risk if you put a Half Life <laughs> as the finale? <laughs> But no, seriously, you put a Superstar Saga sure. in there, or you just put some other game, like just totally. Maybe out this of is where you have your four-way if, Super Metroid race. Yeah, what if you put all the games that are submitted into a hat, like, and you just not, <laughs> you pull one out, uh, and it happens uh, to be uh, it happens to be uh, in time so, for the yeah, beta release. I mean, yeah, there we go. Yeah. Okay, but like, here's your like, actual closer. I'm I'm here to tell you guys what I'll let I'll I'll I'll, I'll let Dark Man say what he's got to say, and I'll tell you what the closer is going to be. Okay. 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 So. My my point the thing is not even Super Metroid, not even something that's like oh that big hype thing. Just put some random thing that like people are not expecting at all <laughs> that looks like it has the potential to like sure. excite people, like a oh, superstar I, saga kind of thing. I thought you were gonna say completely random, just like a boy <laughs> yeah, in his blob in a half, SGDQ yeah. Yeah. finale. Yeah. Just yep. no Strider here's the NES. <laughs> here's Strider the NES. actual finale. You want the okay because you've used up all your your Final Fantasy, your 3D Zelda cards. I know you can repeat them. Here's the actual finale of SGDQ. Whether you want this to be it or not, uh, a, a a a race of some sort of 120 star uh, between people like Cheese Live Egg simply because they said they're going. They said it's going to happen. Are you Why saying not that we're going to have a game? six player a 120 six. star race? I'm saying a dual stream. Dual stream. 16 per. <laughs> Anyone can join online if they want. That's right. Yeah. Now, now, would that be just as hype, if not more hype, than the uh, Super Metroid race of AGDQ 2014? <laughs> oh, potentially more. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> more. More. Ooh, wow. wow. I can't handle more. Yeah, yeah. That's okay. That's, I'm not saying that's what I want it to be. But I think it would be fine, though. I think it'd be something. It's something would be completely different uh, from what has been the finales. Um, people were clamoring. Obviously, people are always clamoring for Mario 64, and for good reason. It's a great watch. Uh, it's got quite a history behind it. If you get someone like a Siglemic to go as well, and you actually convince them, hey, you're just gonna be one of the boys in there. You'll, you know, it, you could potentially make some magic happen here. And if you want to contain it to just one four way race, and you can get those runners there, I think this is where you spend it. Because then the 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 it's like Super Metro. The hype was so big, the setup time paid for itself. Yeah. And the setup time afterwards doesn't matter because it's like this is the end. This is the game. This is this is we have reached the finale. Yeah. So I think yeah, instead of repeating doing another Final Fantasy or Chrono Trigger or doing another 3D Zelda 100, percent I think this is I think this is the or this is the opportunity. It's going to be submitted by at least two or three runners. A 120 star race of Mario 64 as the finale for SGDQ. Whether you okay. want to be or not, that is the smart pick. That's where you you're going to the casino and putting your money down. I like it. I like it. It's pretty good. Like you don't have to worry about donation incentives or anything like that. But it's just nope. the game everybody knows, so they'll be looking but forward to it. But people are watching. They're going to submit yeah. and they're going to donate anyway because yeah, it's Mario. Exactly. Yeah. I agree. It's it's good. I like it. Wild Arms. <laughs> Ooh. All right. All right. I would love it if Wild Arms. First of all, I just want Wild Arms to get in. It needs, to, it it needs to be in the marathon. It needs to be in the really, marathon. Yeah. Like, I mean, I don't know if Chaos is going to submit it because he's going to, uh, you know, um, what's it called? Is it going to uh, be in Limit Break? Limit break. Yeah, it's okay. going to be in Limit Break. Okay. So, but I know he submitted it to SGDQ last year, so I'm hoping he does it this year. I mean, I really want to see it in there. Oh my God, I'd be front row just watching that front run. It's, busted. it's so yeah. good. It's uh, it's one of those just it's it's the RPG that uh, speaks for itself by discovery. The amount of things that have been found in Wild Arms, yeah, it's it's due, it's due. I feel like there's there's a set of games where it's like it's due for a marathon. Let's let's get it in there. That's one of them. <laughs> um, That's interesting. It's another storyline we didn't really bring up in the episode, not to go on forever, but yeah, is where our RPG spot in the GDQ especially now, with like, limit RPG break being limit so break close, is, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and yeah, not just RPG Limit Break existing, it will have just happened two months prior, so you sure. say, we just did a lot of this. Now, the RPG Limit Break is going to be a small percentage of what of how many people are going to watch SGDQ, but yeah. still, does that somehow play into it? I know Rom Scout is a fan of the RPGs. I know last year, he really wanted to give an opportunity to a lot. Kind of their slots ended up getting taken by the Banjo-Tooies, the Skyward Swords, the Thousand-Year Doors of the World, but I think there's a part of him he wants 
wants to see a yeah. different, not just another Final Fantasy, a different kind of RPG get into it. And if you go in that route, and if you're going to go down with something different in that finale slot, is it maybe a something like a Wild Arms or you know a Lufia or something? Who knows? Mm. So all right. I saw another question in here. This was a while ago when we were talking about brackets, but uh, I think Boney wanted to know whose bracket was busted. So so in case anybody uh, didn't realize, we, we went ahead and the three of us all picked Mystery Tournament winners. <laughs> and uh, we don't talk about how badly we're doing. It's, it's bad. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> I, I, I just think it's that. hard because it, I think it, a lot of us had very similar brackets. Is it okay if I call out somebody? Can I call someone out right now? Oh, All right, no. go ahead. Countdown, go ahead. you were due for your first <laughs> tournament win. Damn. This Damn was it. your tournament. What happened? <laughs> what happened? This was our oh, tournament. Did you have him going deep? I had him going very deep. Yeah. Ooh. Just, a little, Ooh. <laughs> just, just a little bit of a mistake. Only 50% of my bracket is busted at this point. But <laughs> You had him beating Jorf? I had the upset of the century, Countdown wow. beating Jorf. Yeah. Oh, oh my god. My god. <laughs> okay, I'm sticking to my Dukes and my, my North Carolinas from now, right, so, from well, now just, on. Let's... Yeah. Just to let everybody know, we have a bet right on this. We're not going to reveal the bet. The no. loser will basically reveal what the bet is. There yeah. will be oh, it'll be stream. It'll be on the. Sh- we'll probably talk about it on the show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it will just be show. an episode. And at, at this point, I'm I'm basically the loser. So that's <laughs> marvelous. Let's just put it this way: Gold is not looking forward to his bet. Let's put I, it that way. No, I mean, if the tournament could run another five, ten years, that'd be just fine with me. But, but yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, did we see any other questions you guys wanted to to answer there? There were like twenty questions at the start, and they flew by, and then nobody recopy pasted. So oh, there, there was yeah. a quick one from uh, Dark Terex. He wanted to know why I was not booted out of the TFS yet after Golden got my game, and my answer is simple: he won. I won. Oh, there you go. He won. And that? cool. There was All a right. couple I saw. Uh, just mo, yeah. Patty asked, "What is the most amp?" Anticipated game for SGDQ that isn't BCAS. What game do we just personally want to see in there, bro? I guess we kind of got into that yeah. little bit the closer. Sure. But, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, thanks. yeah. I, yeah. I, for me, it's still Freedom Planet. I want to see Freedom Planet make it into SGDQ really badly. So. All right. Uh, I was going to say, yeah, I feel like I've already said a bunch of different games at this point. So it's like if I pick another one, it's just adding to my list of like, just, I know, to like and pilot. I want this Sorry. game and that one, and yeah, I want them all. Why can't this I have them all? Christmas wish list. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's sure. go ahead and uh, we can wrap this up. What an episode! The speech. The speech. Uh, okay. Am I supposed to say something here? What was I going to say? I don't even remember. We had. What were you going <laughs> to say? Did you have one I had. I had one plan. I was all ready to go. <laughs> This was my my turn. Oh, it was going to be about the mystery tournament, but uh, yeah, uh, just uh, saying that it's it's really cool that uh, so many people are are getting involved and in taking part, even when it's not uh, their race necessarily uh, for the tournament. Just seeing a lot of people jumping in and playing and having some fun. Uh, it kind of reminds me of the old uh, you know old old days of SRL when people just raced games, and I say that all the time on the show. But it's like, hey, the mystery tournament is kind of the ongoing example of you know people just looking for an excuse to race uh and play some games hang out have a good time so it's it's really cool to see that there's a lot of involvement and shame on all of you who are upsetting my bracket that's (laughs) that's uh you will be receiving uh messages the ultimate rant everyone wants an opportunity for in march I just want to go live for just a minute and just yep. crap on everyone. Yep. Messed up my bracket. That's right. But uh, shout outs to Captain Drake, though, for fulfilling the prophecy. So he's done his job. I will meet him in the third round and uh, he can knock me out there. So nice. That is good. I'm glad you're already putting up the white flag. Right. Don't, hey, don't worry. I... You're going to draw B cast. Don't worry about it. Okay. That's, I'm sure that's in there somewhere. It's, uh, <laughs> that's your other submission. I'm... It might be. Yeah, yeah could be. Uh, all right. Well, uh, we've got our next show going to be uh, next Thursday, uh, 8 p.m., just like tonight's show was. 
And uh, do we have a raid target in mind? Yeah, I mean, it, it, we, we got to congratulate him. Oh, he's uh, live right now. Okay. We, we talk about the 32 as such a big time, and he's already back in there. All right. Now uh, I, oh. going let's, for a 31. let's go Dracu Poo. Yeah, I need. <laughs> All, All right. right. That I, was what my brain. I don't put much thought in. Okay. I just just wanted to know if there was a just backstory. To clarify what it was. Oh, no, there's no backstory here. Okay, no backstory. We'll just end on that note. How about that? Uh, we won't. We won't explain it. We just uh, just end on that note. Head on over there. Watch Furious Paul. And uh, yeah, uh, mystery tournament again Saturday on Twitch.tv slash Speedruns Live. Spike and I will probably be there uh, doing some commentary. So, yeah. Do we know what match it's gonna be? Do we know what match is going to be? I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, they're trying to look be, for races. To be I believe determined. the Darby and match might be it, but might be one of them. I don't know. We'll see. All right. Sounds good, guys. Uh, yeah, uh, have a good weekend. And just remember that your run is not over until all of us say that you hit the, the final split. <laughs> okay. No. I wasn't ready for that. Come on. Let's try it one more time. One more time. <laughs> right. The, the, fi the final, final split. It's not, split. Okay. We'll work on it. Right. We, got, we got another, you know, next week, no guest again. How about right. that? It's just, just, we'll keep All it right. until we get yeah. it. It's all right. <laughs>